Hello everyone. We are discussing William Shakespeare's play As You Like It and this is our fourth video in the series and we are doing the paraphrase of the text. Till now we have completed the paraphrase till act 2 scene for, uh, 6 and today in this video we will be taking up act 2 scene 7. Act 2 scene 3 takes place in another part of the forest. Uh, a table is set out and uh, we see uh, Duke Senior, Amiens and others. Now Duke Senior inquires about Jax and he asks uh, one of his lords, that is the first lord, to go and find Jax and to bring him before him. At that moment itself, Jax enters and uh, uh, he is in a very uh, happy mood and very excitedly he narrates to Duke Senior about his meeting with, with a fool in the forest and that fool is Touchstone. So Jax, he says to Duke, uh, Duke Senior, a fool, a fool, I met a fool in the forest, a motley fool, a miserable world as I do live by food, I met a fool. And uh, Jax is very impressed by Touchstone and he tells to Duke Senior how Touchstone philosophized on the passing of time. So he quotes Touchstone and he says that he, he said, it is 10 o'clock, thus we may say, how the world wax. It is but an hour ago since it was 9, and after one hour more it will be 11. And so from hour to hour we ripe and ripe, and then from hour to hour we rot and rot, and thereby hangs a tail. Now, Jacks. He, uh, he describes the fool and he says that as he heard Touchstone moralizing on time, he began to laugh loudly. So he says, my lungs began to crow like Chanticleer, that fool should be so deep contemplative. So he says that I uh, began to laugh loudly and uh, uh, he is uh, rather surprised that fools can be uh, thinking so deeply. And he says that he continued laugh, laughing without, without a stop. So now uh, he, he, uh, we see Jax describing Touchstone very fondly. And then uh, he ends up by, saying, by asking Duke Senior uh, to fulfill his wish. And his wish is to be a fool. And his uh, uh, ambition is to, be, to have a motley coat to which the uh, Duke Senior agrees and uh, then uh, Jax, uh, he says that uh, when he becomes a fool, he elaborates on it and he says that uh, still Duke Senior must consider Jax to be wise and Jax must be granted the freedom uh, to speak with whomever he pleases as all fools are. Uh, then he, uh, he philosophizes on uh, why those who are most annoyed by a fool's foolishness are likely to laugh most at the fool. And he suggests that it is be because people whom fo fools mock do not want to appear foolish before the fool's perceptive eye. And that is why uh, to protect themselves with laughter, Jax asks the Duke to allow uh, him uh, to, uh, to take up the role of the fool and uh, he promises in return uh, to cleanse the Duke's foul body of the infected world with his honest criticism. So after this, uh, the Duke, he accuses Jax of uh, being hypocritical. Uh, in pointing out the sins of others uh, because according to Duke Senior, Jax have himself committed sins of the flesh and uh, Jax goes on uh, to uh, speak on the subject of pride, uh, calling it a self-exhausting trait and arguing that his criticisms 
will do no harm to those for whom they are inaccurate inaccurate and uh, that for those to whom they they are true uh, they will only uh, point out the ways in which the victim had wronged himself so he says that um, uh he says that uh, that it not flow as usually as the sea till that the weary very means do ebb what women in the city do i name when that i say the city woman bears the cost of princes on unworthy soldiers so he says that if, if, when i am going to criticize a city woman who 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 had who wastes money on unworthy items then it would not uh, mean that he is talking about some particular city woman but he would be talking about the women in, gen in general so this is how um, he puts his words and at this moment orlando enters with his sword and uh, when orlando enters he he orders everyone around uh, and he says eat no more so with the uh, with his sword he demands food and uh, uh, everybody duke G uh, senior and jacks uh, they are surprised and uh, duke senior inquires if the uh, if uh, this uh, if the intruder that is if orlando is distressed or simply poorly mannered so when orlando uh, continues to uh, ask for food uh, the people around they answer his request very civilly and uh, uh, they welcome him to their table and thus orlando he feels ashamed of having been so unseen uncivil so orlando he apologizes uh, he explains that uh, he assumed that all the manners in the woods were savage he gives uh, an elegant lament of hopes that the men have lived some time in a more civilized circumstance and have been to church and uh, that they might therefore accept his renewed gentleness as compensation for his temporary misbehavior uh, so orlando he asks forgiveness from the duke he says uh, speak you so when he when he finds that uh, duke uh, senior and the other men they are speaking gently to him then orlando he says speak you so gently pardon me i pray you i thought that all things had been savage here and therefore put i on the countenance so he says that i i put on this behavior because i thought that everything around in this place is wild is savage but whatever you are that in this desert inaccessible under the shade of melancholy boughs lose and neglect the creeping hours of time if ever you have looked on better days if ever been where bells have knell to church if ever set at any good man's feast if ever from your eyelids wiped a tear and know that it's a it's to pity and be pitied let gentleness my strong enforcement be in the which i hope i blush and hide my sword so he asks forgiveness and he says that uh, hmm, uh, they should accept his uh, renewed gentleness as a compensation for his temporary misbehavior uh duke senior uh he uh, attests and he says he attests he says that they have seen better days and have been to church and uh, that they, they accept his forgiveness and hope to fulfill his needs uh, now orlando uh, uh, then they invite him uh, to join for food uh, but orlando at that moment he says Uh, then, but forbear your food a little while. While like a dove, I go to find my phone. So he says that you should uh, wait. A, uh, uh, you, he asks everybody to wait for a moment while he uh, while he go and fetches his phone. That is, he is talking about uh, Adam. He says that I'll go like a deer and I'll go and fetch find my young one and give it food. so he says that there is an old uh, poor man who after me hath many a weary step limped in pure life till he first suffered oppressed with two weak evils age and hunger i will not touch a bit so he says till he brings adam here adam 
he dis he says that uh, there is a man with him that is adam he's talking about adam and he is very hungry and tired and till he brings him here he is not going to touch anything he is not going to eat anything so uh, then he leaves to bring adam and we see duke senior and jacks comment uh, on how their own unhappiness uh, is matched by the unhappy situations of so many others so duke senior he says thou sees we are not all alone unhappy this wide and universal theater presents more woeful pageants than the scene wherein we play so he says that there are more sufferers in this <clears throat> um, uh, there are more sufferers in the world and they are not uh, uh, alone unhappy <clears throat> so duke senior he uh, he compares life to a theater and uh, speaks of how many woeful pageants that is uh, the um, shows pageants mean show woeful shows shows full of sadness are played out in it then comes jack's famous speech that all the world's a stage so jack sear he philosophizes on uh, the stages of man on the different roles that a man has uh, plays in his life and he says all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players they have their exits and their entrances and one ma man in his time plays many parts his acts being seven ages so jacks he says that the world is a stage and uh, the women and the men are merely players and each uh, one has his own exit and his entrance and uh, one man in his life he has to uh, play many parts and, he, and then he says that uh, one man in his life he, he he plays seven parts and then he talks about these seven stages of man at first the infant uh, mewing and puking in the nurse's arm uh, so the first the first stage is that of an infant where it uh, is crying in in the arms of the nurse and then it is uh, uh, the school boy then the winning school boy with his satchel and shining morning face creeping like snail unwillingly to school so the second stage is of a of a school boy who is always complaining and he is moving towards his school with his bag and um, uh, very unwillingly he creeps like the snail and then the lover sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress eyebrow and then there is the lover who is always burning like a furnace with his <clears throat> poems made in uh, made in uh, to appreciate the beauty of his mistress and then a soldier full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard jealous in honor sudden and quick in quarrel seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth and then uh, the fourth stage is that of a soldier who takes strange oaths and his beard is rough and shady and uh, he is very sudden and quick in quarrel and then is the justice the fifth is the judge in fair round belly with good cap and line with eyes severe and beard of formal cut full of wise saws and modern instances and so he plays his part so the judge uh, with a round belly and with great income uh he is full of uh, wise sayings and uh, he plays his part then the sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side his youthful hose well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shank and his big manly voice <coughs> turning again towards childish treble pipes and whistles in his sound and then comes the old age when the man is uh, dressed up in a uh, uh, loose uh, uh, pants with uh, spectacles on nose and uh, uh, this is actually his second childhood the voice turning towards the childish treble and there are whistles in his sound so this is 
and he returns back to his second childhood. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sense the, sense I, sense the, stay, sense everything. So the last scene, it brings an end to this eventful history is the second childishness. It is the stage of mere forgetfulness without teeth, without eyes, without taste, without everything. Now at this moment, uh, Orlando enters with Adam and uh, then we see Amiens singing a very depressing song about uh, the unkindness and invisibility of man's ingratitude and the foolishness of love and friendship. Then uh, Duke Senior, he seems to recognize Orlando and when he comes to learn ab about Orlando that he is the son of Sir Roland B. Boyce, uh, he is very happy and he tells Orlando that he truly loved his father uh, and uh, he welcomes uh, both uh, Orlando and Adam and uh, uh, then uh, he um, moves towards the cave with both of them. So this is how the scene comes to an end.